large city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. People today think young. Make more time for fun at home, family style. This is the life for Pepsi-Cola. Light, bracing, clean-tasting Pepsi. So think young. Say, Pepsi, please. So go ahead and fix a drink. That lets you drink young as you think. Yes, get the right one. The modern light one. Now it's Pepsi. For those who think young. I don't understand that. I have no choice. Matt, we've been friends a long time. I come here to your office expecting help. Now you tell me you're going to throw me off my land. You saw the court order. It's perfectly legal. I've got to serve it. All I need's a little more time. I'll make the payment just like I made all the others. Well, you do have ten days. That ain't enough time and you know it. I poured too much sweat and too many years into that farm to lose it. What I owe on the whole note don't amount to much if I just have the time. Did you talk to Bert? Bert Donald, my old friend. I can't even get to see him. Well, Bert's moved up in the world sometimes. That changes a man. Oh, he's flying high as a hawk. Big cattle broker. Now he's proving it to me. It's just plain spite, Matt. Uh, uh, Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, I've got it. Oh, howdy, Ed. Chester? Well, I'll get along, Matt. If you can't help me, I guess nobody can. I'll try to think of something, Matt. Sure. Thanks anyway. Uh, uh, All right, uh, Chester. Uh, what's your problem? <laughs> It's just terrible, Mr. Dill. Now, I'm in trouble, real bad trouble. What, are you broke again? Yes, sir. I, I mean, that ain't the main trouble. It's, it's uh, uh, that letter? From Waco. So? It's from lawyers in Waco. Feeney and Swift says so right on the envelope. All right, it's from lawyers in Waco. Well, well don't you see? They're after me. They're going to have me arrested. Why? Well, I didn't ever tell you this, but one time I borrowed $4 from a fellow down there. I was going to pay him back, but I never quite got around to it, and now they're after me. That's what it says in the letter? Yes, sir. Well, I mean, I reckon so. Uh, well, I don't know what else it could be. Chester, have you read the letter? I, I've been too scared. Well, why don't you read the letter, then, Chester? I, I, I just can't, Mr. Dillon. Here, you read it. Here. Uh, Mr. Chester Wesley Proudfoot, dear sir... Chester, will you take your hands away from your ears? Well, Dear sir, we regretfully inform you of the demise of your cousin, Clarence Webley Proudfoot. Demise? That means he died, Chester. Oh, poor cousin Clarence. I never did like him much. Said Mr. Proudfoot. What? What, Mr. Dillon? Please be advised that probate of the will of said Mr. Proudfoot has disclosed a bequest in your behalf in the sum of $368.63. What? A cashier's check in this amount will be forwarded to you shortly. Ah! Well, well what's the matter, Chester? Well, now, that's a mighty puny joke to play on a man sending that kind of letter. Well, it's no joke. You've inherited $368.63. Ah, uh, it's got to be a joke. No, it doesn't, Chester. You think they really ain't joshing? Well, of course not. Well, I don't know. Cousin Clarence always was pretty tricky. He might have changed there at the end, but the United States mail is going to have to prove it to me. Matt, has 
Is Chester taking up permanent residence down at the stage depot? Well, from the looks of the office, you'd think so, Doc. If that check from Waco doesn't get here soon, you're going to have two more patients on your hands. Uh, two? Well, I don't think Chester can last the week out, and I'm not sure I'm going to stand him for another day. Matt. Matt, you'd better get over the bar. <laughs> Why, Kitty? What's the trouble? Ed Grimes. He's there with Bert Donald. Oh. All right. I don't want to talk about it, Ed. Not now, not never. Bert, at least you can be decent enough to answer me. Ed, uh... This isn't the best place in the world to talk business. Well, I think it is. I want to ask him in front of these people to give me time to make payment on that note. Marshal, I got nothing to say to him. Seems to me a man's got a right to have a drink without nobody annoying him. Look, Bert, it's kind of worried. Maybe, maybe you might reconsider. No. All right. I tried everything I know to make you listen to reason. I even begged in public. But I ain't going to get down on my knees and crawl. You ain't a man no more, Bert. You're something slimy. You ought to be stepped on. That's enough, Ed. Man like him don't deserve to live. Somebody's gonna kill him. If nobody else does, it just might be me. All right, get out of here, Ed. Go on home right now. Go on. Don't you look at me like that, Marshal. I haven't broken any law. Till I do, whatever I say or don't say is none of your business. Bert, when you find time, remember he was your friend. <laughs> I just can't figure out what's happened to Bert. Uh, Matt, aren't there any legal steps that you can take? I'm not a lawyer, Doc. Miss Dillon? It's here. Miss Dillon, the, the letter, the one from Waco, it's here. Look here, I, I got it. The letter from Waco, it's right here. The letter. Yes, I see it, Chester. Sit down and open it. <laughs> you better do it. I got a pure D case of flutter. All right, all right, let me have it. Yeah, there it is, a cashier's check for $368.63. May not the Chester Wesley Proudfoot. Oh. <laughs> well, congratulations, Chester. Yeah. yeah. Sam, a round of beers on the house. It's $368.63. Looks like your money worries are over, Chester. <laughs> Chester. $368.63. And 63 cents. Chester, I don't hear any broom noises. Chester? Chester. White. What? White. The house I'm going to build, it'll be white with a red barn. Oh, oh, I see. It ain't easy deciding what color to paint your house. But now you're sure. Huh? Oh, yes, sir. And I decided to get me an all-black suit and an all-black horse. I think I'd look good in all-black, don't you, Mr. Dillon? Kindly dignified like. Uh, well, I think that's the right word, yeah, dignified. And a man with a black suit ought to have a black hat, too. Reckon I'll have to buy me a new hat. Chester, I'm happy about your money, and I want you to enjoy every penny of it, but... You, you ought to slow down a little. This house you're talking about, the house alone is going to cost you more than you have. More than $368.63? I'm afraid so, Chester. Well, then, by jing, I know what I'll do. I'll just go over to the Long Branch. Well, I know I shouldn't ask this, but why are you going over to the Long Branch? Why? Now I got enough money to play in a big poker game. Only reason I never won before was I didn't have enough stake. Now I can run that Waco money into the thousands, maybe more. That's what I thought. Get your hat. Are you coming with me at the Long Branch? No, you're coming with me, Chester, to the bank. You're going to leave your money with Mr. Bodkin, and it's going to stay there. Now, now Mr. Let's Dillon... Let's go. Talk to you about the plan I got. You know I've been driving freight to, for Wells Fargo, don't you? Oh, well, everybody knows that. Sure, now they... I made a lot of money too, Chester. Through rain, sleet, and snow, I drove them wagons and never lost nearly one. You were good for you. Sure, now Chester, don't you see? Now you and me can open our own freight line. We can. Yeah, we wouldn't need more than one wagon to start. With all the money we made, we could buy more wagons and carry more freight. Pretty soon we'd be millionaires. 
You don't have to do anything but put up the money. Maybe there. Sure, now, what, what do you say? Well, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll think real hard. Sure, now, now you do that, Chester, and you think hard. The Chester Wesley Proud Foot Freight Line. Hmm. Well, old money bags has decided to join us. <laughs> yeah. Sit down, Chester. Thank you. Miss Kitty, float off. Hello, Chester. Miss Dillon, you know, Dudley Cheever is the fourth fella in two days with a good idea for investing my money. Well, I hope you haven't done it. Well, not yet. i got to have time to think it over. Good, because I have something here for you to think over. What's this? That, Chester, is a statement. An accounting. A bill. Balance due... Twenty-three dollars. What for? What for? Well, I can't remember all of it, Chester, but just offhand, I can recall the times you came to me with back miseries, heaves, stomach aches, shooting pains, and wheezes. Well... And then there was a time you broke your toe, kicking the can that had a rock in it. Well, and the splitter it. that I had to remove when you sat on the rear well, chair. I, I know, Doc, but them wasn't official calls. Not most of them was Well, according to my calculations, that bill represents just about one-tenth of what you really owe me. Well, I never... I'm ready for another beer. How about you, Matt? Oh, I think that's fine. Uh, me too. Chester, now that you have money... I... I think you should consider your responsibilities. My what? I like buying a round of drinks for the house. Wait, you don't mean for all them spongers and everybody? Well, it's usual when a man has money like you have. That's well, right. Now, uh, that could come to, to $5 or better. Well, you can afford it. Uh, well, now, wait a minute, Kitty. I think you're leading Chester into bad habits. Well, when a man has wealth, he should use it wisely. He should contribute to his community. Now, for example... You, you take the U.S. Marshal's office. Now, there's an old stove there. That stove works? Well, if you know the right combination, but it smokes up the whole place. Now, there, there's the Marshal's mattress, Well, yes, example. but now, the, the, the governor would take care of them things. Yeah, but they don't, Chester. So I thought that some wealthy, public-spirited citizen would. How about those drinks? Yeah, how about my bill? The mattress. Well, I sure didn't never believe my best friend would dog a man just because all of a sudden he's got rich. Well, who's dogging you? You are. All three of you. And I'm downright disappointed. You know what you are? What? What? You ain't nothing but fortune hunters. Radio Free Europe is the effective truth weapon of the free world. It is effective where other means of communication fail. Radio Free Europe gets its broadcasts through the Iron Curtain and keeps captive peoples informed about events around the globe. Without these broadcasts, the captive peoples would become easy propaganda victims of the communists. They could then become ready tools in the communists' drive to undermine freedom where it continues to exist. Radio Free Europe is a privately supported institution. It depends for its continued operations on the enlightened generosity of free peoples, chiefly in the United States. You are asked for your support and your truth dollars. To continue this vital program, send what you can to the Radio Free Europe Fund, Box 1961, Mount Vernon 10, New York. When deciding how much to give, please remember that there is no substitute for Radio Free Europe in keeping the truth alive behind the Iron Curtain. Radio Free Europe Fund, Box 1961, Mount Vernon 10, New York. Chester? Chester? Ch Chester, what... What are you doing sitting back here in the cell? Resting my eyes. Well, the light in the office isn't all that bright. Now, come on, let's fix some coffee, huh? I ain't thirsty. Well, well you, you mind if I join you here? It's a free jail. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. You, you, uh, you, you still mad at us? Oh, I ain't mad, exactly. It, it's just that when a man's got business problems like I got, and they keep weighing on him, a man don't expect his best friends to keep picking and nagging at him. No, I suppose not. Miss Dillon, it ain't easy to be rich. I, I don't want to go around being show-offy and stuck up, but like Miss Kitty says, I got responsibility. Chester, 
Doc and Kitty and I are interested in just two things, that you use your money wisely and that somebody doesn't cheat you out of it. You talk like a little bitty old baby. No, but uh, you must admit that you haven't had this kind of a money problem before. Mm-hmm. Usually it's the other way around. How to get it instead of what to do with it. Okay. Now, how about some coffee? Huh? Well, I reckon maybe I'll have thirsted up some. Good. <laughs> Come on. Marshal? Oh, hello, Bert. Marshal, I want you to arrest Ed Grimes. Huh? Why? He tried to kill me. I was driving home from town. He bushwhacked me. Put a bullet right through my hat. Another inch and I wouldn't be here, and I want him arrested. Well, what makes you so sure it was Ed Grimes? Did you see him? Well, no, I just seen a man ride off, but Ed's the only one that'd want to kill me. You heard him say he would. Where'd all this happen? Turner's Crossing. All right, I'll look into it. Looking ain't enough. I want him in jail now. I said I'd look into it. I don't like the way you handle your job. I got a right to protection. Why don't you go find another marshal somewhere? Maybe you'll like him better. You can't get away with this, marshal. I'll tell everybody in Dodge. Fine, you go tell him. I will, right now. I reckon everybody's got problems. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they have. You, Chester, you've been standing there long enough. You gonna sit in? It, me? Yeah. Well, no, 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 thank you. I don't think so. Uh, game too rich for your blood? Well, it ain't that. I... Yeah, there's a chair open if you think you can afford it. Oh, I can afford it. Yeah, from what I hear, you're strictly a penny handy man. No, that ain't so. Oh, there's nothing to be ashamed of when it comes to poker. There's boys and there's men. You can always play with the boys. Play with the boys? Just you don't let nobody take that chair. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, Huh? I'll just get me a clutch of my money out of that bank and I'll show that tin horn. I'll open for ten dollars. Ten dollars? Yeah, ten dollars. He'll be showing off, so he'll raise. I call. I'm got three kings, so I draw two queens. Full house. I got him. I bet twenty-five dollars. He raises. I just look at him kind of cold like... Hello, Chester. I raised $50. What? Oh. Uh, Ed, I, I was thinking about something. Where are you going? I don't know. I really don't know. Did you hear about Bert Donald? That story he had about being bushwhacked and all? I heard. I heard he accused me, but I couldn't shoot a man from ambush, not even Bert Donald. Well, Ed, have you had any luck about borrowing the money? Tried the bank. Mr. Botkin won't loan money on a second mortgage. I'm just finished. Yeah, well, now, now, now. Don't quit hoping. Maybe Mr. Doom can figure something out. The note's due tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Well, come on, Ed. I'll buy you a beer. Thanks, Chester. I'd like one. Thirty, forty, fifty. All right, Bert, you just mark that note paid in full, and I'll give it to Ed. Where do you get the money? Rob the bank? Never mind. You got paid, and I'll sign it and get out. I'll sign it. But I ain't finished to him. It's still a matter of him trying to kill me. How do you take me for a fool, Bert? What do you mean? That hat of yours with a bullet hole. Well, what about There it? were powder burns on that hat. I seen them. It would have been pretty hard for a man to miss you if he were close enough to cause powder burns. Well, he did. You did the shooting, Bert. You took your hat off and you shot a hole in it and you were too stupid to back away. It was grime. You say so, I think different. Now, you got your money, go buy yourself a new hat. Dylan, I'll see to Bert, it. Bert, I'm getting real tired of you. Get out of here and stay away from Ed Grimes or I'm going to break you in two. Chester? Yes, sir. Didn't you tell me Mr. Botkin refused to give Ed a second mortgage? Yes, sir. Why did he change his mind? Well, I, that, now that, that kind of puzzled me. I've been wondering about something else, too. Yes, sir. Why is your bank balance down to $18.63? Mr. Dillon, you ain't got no right to go poking around my bank balance. All right, I apologize, Chester, but... It's kind of a coincidence in the amount of money Mr. Botkin gave me and the amount that's not in your account anymore. Well, maybe a small coincidence. 
All right, Chester, what happened? Well, I had a, a, a talk with Mr. Botkin, a, a financial talk, and I underwrote the loan. You what? Under it. I, I told Mr. Botkin to take my $350 and keep it till Ed could pay off the balance he owed. That way I don't have to worry about spending it. Well, what happens when Ed pays the bank and the money goes back in your account? Oh, I got that all worked out. Mr. Botkin's going to allow me to have $10 a month. I, I figure I can handle that much without all them tycoon worries. <laughs> I think you can, if you're careful. Mr. Dillon, I... I reckon I just wasn't cut out to be real rich. I get squirmy, and, and I don't trust people. You think Cousin Clarence was banking on that? He was pretty mean. Forget Cousin Clarence. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. And you ain't mad at me for what I've done? <laughs> no, Chester. I'm not mad at you. Hi, this is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Brand. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. You see, Kellogg's All Brand is the reliable brand that millions depend on for the effectiveness they want. It's the real Battle Creek formula that brings you more brand bulk in every serving, more of the vital brand bulk that helps you keep regular. Kellogg's All Brand is also low in calories and mighty pleasant tasting. You can trust Kellogg's for that. The crisp toasted shreds have the kind of good brand muffin flavor that most folks are partial to. So next time you are shopping, get Kellogg's All Brand... And you'll get reliability. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Brand. Reliability. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Vic Perrin and Harry Bartell, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, Ralph Moody, and Jack Moyle. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke. Gary Moore, Bing and Rosie too. That's Showbiz weekdays on the CBS Radio Network. Gorgo, the greatest monster picture ever produced. Now showing at the Texas Theater like nothing you've ever seen before. Gorgo, the gigantic prehistoric monster from the ocean depths. This is the big one. Gorgo, now showing at the Texas Theater in Oak Cliff. You're in tune with KRLD, AM and FM in Dallas. Stay tuned now for The World Tonight on CBS. <laughs> 